Well, this old Gibson, I just wet sanded it to 600 and that knocked down a lot of the mess that uh, the overspray and that seemed to do a nice job. Um, all the drop fills seem to have done their job. So I, I just took the tape off the fingerboard and that reminds me I'm going to have to do a fret job and a leveling there and all that. But I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off the pick guard and see what that looks like. I'm a little bit leery of doing that because I don't know if it's stuck to the finish or not. It's probably prudent to try to cut it all the way around. It'd be really nice if it would just cooperate and peel up okay. It's trying to be a little difficult peeling it up, I'll tell you that, but it's coming. It's making me fight for every little piece, I can tell you that. Well, it's not terrible. You always want better, but it's not terrible. Just need to see what we can do to make it a little better. And I'll see if I can get this off. Not looking forward to taking this off either, I'll be honest. Well, we're getting there. Got more work to do to clean it all up, but we're moving along. I've got this buffed out as about as good as I can do, and I'm going to go to the Renaissance Wax now in hopes that that will make it look even better. It looks pretty good, though. I'm, I'm overall pretty happy with it. I, I've said a thousand times that every time I do a finished job, I always wish it was better. And that would be true for this one as well. But considering where we were, where we've been, and where we are now, I'm pretty happy. This has been a job and a half right here. When you're buffing this wax off, you want to keep your rag turning quite a bit. It really does help make a difference in the way the wax comes off. If you don't keep that rag turning, it don't come off very well. You won't find it on a well-traveled highway, not even on a dusty gravel road. Okay, we're going to move on to the next step. Well, my friends, it's Monday, July 11th, and these tuning keys came in from Stuart McDonald. And uh, they're the kind of keys that look pretty original to the instrument. Um, I even bought them in the ivory color versus the white because I felt like that, that was more authentic. It comes with ferrules, but I did not install the ferrules because, as you can see, this guitar has never had ferrules. The holes are just barely big enough to get the posts in, let alone to have ferrules. Anyway, that's the way I'm leaving it. I did install my truss rod cover. It's a slightly different color, but it kind of matches the fretboard, so I'm not too worried about that. It kind of matches the bridge, too, so it can, you know, because of all that, I think it's per pretty good. Now we're going to do a fret job on this thing. I did tighten the truss rod before I put this on there because I could see a slight underbow, and by tightening it, it looked like it went away, so I think we're in good shape. I think we got a little bit of a rock right here. I can feel something. Not much of a rock exactly, but there's like a high fret or something just that's just slightly off. I can feel it. And you have to want to be there when you find it. For it's not on any maps I know. Out across the field, through the pasture. Climb along the steep and rocky trail. When you cross that little creek in the valley, you'll see that vine-covered church on the hill. That vine-covered church above the valley, where the congregation gathered to pray. Built with their hands from the forest, now stands as a marker for the grave. 
got some 600. I'm gonna go over this. When you do this this way, I know it looks counterintuitive to everybody. It seems like this would be a problem, but when you're doing it with, first of all, 600, it's incredibly fine sandpaper. Second of all, it rounds off these things. It makes them look like they're perfectly round, even more so than the rounding, rounding tool does. So the rounding tool will get you most of the way there, but this makes it look perfect. And it, it makes them all look the same, and it all but polishes them. It, they're not quite like a mirror, but they're very, very, very smooth. And some people would say you'll feel the grooves this way because you're going this way with the sandpaper. You won't, it's 600. It's perfectly smooth. So anyway, that's why I do it the way I do it. And it saves tons of time, but it also looks better. It just looks wonderful. Now, if you want to polish each fret out, you can do that, and I have done that, and you've seen me do it on a recent Martin guitar, I believe. And uh, I've got no problem with polishing frets out. I just don't think you need to do that in every case. Makes them look really good. Now, of course, the fretboard looks terrible, but just look at the frets. And then I'll show you what the fretboard looks like after I clean that up. Makes them look really, really good. All right, so now we're gonna clean up the fretboard. And uh, this, by the way, and I, you know, you might say, oh, you're just saying that, but it really does make it easier to know where the fretboard needs to be cleaned up because it dusts, it dusts the fretboard there and you can see it and you can see all the scars in the fretboard. Um, before I did that, you couldn't see them all that clear. And you can see all the dirt and the junk that's on there. And this, now we can clean all that up with this. Okay, you can see the difference between those first two frets and the rest of the frets. Now, you can still see a little bit of fingernail damage right there. I could even get that out, but to get that out, you're taking away a lot of wood off the fretboard. So typically, the deepest places, I just leave them, um, you know, especially if there's only one or two. Well, you're seeing how I'm doing that. I'll show you what the next step is when I get to when I get all the frets cleaned up like that. Because this customer has waited so long for this instrument, I'm going to go ahead and polish these frets, the extra polishing, and I'm not charging him for this. In fact, I haven't charged him for a couple of months now. I'm just doing all this work on my own. He's not being charged. Uh, I stopped charging him. Well, I did charge him on the first part of it there right after Caleb left, uh, you know, where I was putting it back together and all that. I did charge for that because that had to be done. But since I started putting the finish on, I haven't charged him because it's just not gone well. And while it's not my fault, it's not his fault either. And I just figure I'll eat it. Anyway, um, I decided to go ahead and polish these out before I clean up the rest of the frets because this does kind of get down on the frets a little, I mean on the fretboard a little bit. And then I'd have to clean it up anyway, so I'm just cutting my losses and polishing them right now. Okay, you can see the very first three have been polished, perhaps. The other ones are a little duller. They all look nice, but the, these first three look like mirrors. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the rest of them like that too. By being able to polish these frets out to a mirror-like finish with the semi-chrome proves that sanding them this direction with the uh, 600 doesn't hurt anything. In other words, I wouldn't be able to get a glass-like finish with the semi-chrome if there was scratches in there. And there's no scratches at all. It looks exactly like a mirror. 
So for the skeptics out there, it's too bad, so sad. You just don't know what you're talking about. Just about done with the polishing here. Doesn't take too long, just a, you know, 30, 40, 50 strokes per fret, and they're pretty much like a mirror. Oh, you could always do more and get them exactly like a mirror, but, you know, how much do I throw in for free, you know? They look pretty dang good to me. All right, I'm gonna finish cleaning up the frets now with the razor blade. Actually, I have to do them all over again because I, once I started polishing them, that made a mess, so. But that won't be no problem. I can clean them all up real good. Okay, so now I'm gonna take and scratch right along each fret. This cleans out the creeping crud that gets right up against the fret. Just take the corner of the razor blade and wipe it one time like that. This is probably one of the most important places to clean that junk out because if there's anything sitting up under the string right there, that'll cause a problem too. It'll cause a problem with your intonation. It'll cause all kinds of issues. So, turn it around and clean off the other direction on each fret. Okay, I'm gonna look it over real good and, and uh, we'll start oiling this by the way too. So I think I'm gonna, I'm actually tempted to just use linseed oil on this one and the reason for that is uh, I think the linseed oil might make it a little bit darker. This has gotten nice and light colored which is fine, but it's a little bit off compared to everything else. So I think if I use the linseed oil, I think that'll actually darken it a little bit. Not very much, but I think it'll do a little bit more than just the Be Good oil. Just gonna pour some linseed oil on here. Really looks nice now. That's really making it look like brand new. And people always ask about the linseed oil. It's boiled linseed oil. And you can find it on my products I use list on my website. In fact, you can find almost all the products you're seeing me use here on the website on my products I use. I think that looks pretty darn good. Give you a good close up there. Looks really nice. In uh, looking this over, I noticed one more thing. The bridge has kind of had some enameling or some kind of varnish put over over the years. Now that didn't come from here, I can tell you that. We had it taped off. So I'm gonna scratch all that off and make it look clean. It'll all look the same, because right now it doesn't look the same. There's actually grooves in this saddle, and I don't like that, but you know, I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel if I don't need to take the saddle out, I'm not going to. This is one of those saddles that's pretty much glued in place. And I'm gonna clean off the front of it here. It's just dirty mostly. It's just got grime and junk on it for years and years of playing. I'm just gonna use a exacto knife, I think. The siding and shingles are tattered The steeple leans slightly to the right And though all the windows are shattered You can still hear them singing at night Her brothers and sisters who worship Gather in that holy place still Though they lie headrest in the valley Beneath that vine covered church on the hill. Okay, I'm gonna put custom lights on this baby, and I'm gonna hope that it's gonna work. <laughs> Without too, I hope it doesn't fight me too much. I just hope it sets up pretty easy, because I have put a lot of hours in this thing. Now I'm gonna see if these will go down in the hole, and they might or they might not. They don't look like they're going to, so. I guess before I go any further, I'm gonna run the reamer down through there and make sure the reamer goes correct, correctly. I think it does already, but I'm just gonna check it. 
Yeah, might need just a little bit. Okay, I've showed this a bunch of times, but I'll just show it again. And I'll just show it on one string. So you, I start on the inside, I wrap around the post, go over the top of the previous wrap, go around it again like that. So I basically, I've got just almost two full wraps. Then I go through the hole and I'll keep it above the strings that I've already wrapped because you always want to wrap down the post. And, and that means that this is the bottom part of, that's on the post. In other words, this is the lowest part of, the, of all the strings. This part right here is the lowest place on the post. And that's what you want. That's all it takes. You just lift it up straight like that and then take your uh, side cutters and cut it off perfectly level with the top of the post. That's what I do. And that's all there is to it. Now on the treble side, I do that differently. These three, I do them exactly like you saw on the first one. But on the treble side, I do this different. I go ahead and put it through the whole first thing from the inside out like, and then I just Pull up most of the slack, but not all of it, just a little bit of slack, right like that. And then I come back around the post on the outside and under the first string and wrap up like that. And then that locks the string in. It cannot pull out now. These little strings can typically pull uh, out the other way unless you wrap it several more times. If you, But the big strings, they're fine that way. This for sure locks them in and you don't have to worry about them coming off. Okay, I got two more to go and we'll show you what it looks like here in a minute. After all these many months of not playing, and who knows how many years before that, this old 1930s vintage Gibson L00 or O00L, whatever the right word is, is about to start making its first sounds. I have not made any notes on it at all yet, so here we go. That one there is buzzing, I can hear some sounds and I don't think it's on the fret it might be but I think it's in I think it's either in the saddle or the nut we'll have to get to that in a minute these are the custom lights that go from 12 to 52 I mean from 11 to 52 I can tell. You know, your your average player might not even notice that that's muted, but it's muted. It's not ringing out like the other ones. You hear the difference? How the clear, clarity of it rings, clarity rings. This doesn't do that. It's like instead instead of ding, it's. So we gotta fix that. Part of it's coming from the saddle because when I note it, I still hear it. But that's got a pretty good sound for an old guitar. I'm pretty happy with this. Yep, but we gotta fix that sound first because that's driving me crazy. So let's figure out what the problem is. My guess is that it's rattling inside the, the little groove that's there. So I'm gonna to try to fix that. So it's gonna to have to be unstrung on that E string. I'm gonna loosen it up quite a bit. I'm gonna pull this pin and we'll try my new puller here that Paul sent me from St. Louis. Wow, that thing works great. That thing's really cool. 
The problem is that this string is, is buzzing somewhere, and I suspect that it's in this little groove that you see right there. That groove sh really shouldn't even be there, but since it's there, I'm gonna work with it. And the only thing I'm gonna do is take a uh, really fine file here, and I'm going to you know, work it so that it slants one, one continuous direction to that hole. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm not trying to go any deeper, you understand. I'm just trying to make it one continuous groove to the hole. In fact, I'm even going to widen it a little bit because it could just be hanging up on the sides. But I'm just making it one continuous groove to the hole. And I really think that's where the problem is. I think it's in this saddle right here. Again, I'm not going deeper. Trying to clean it up. There we go. I think it looks clean now. I can. See, the reason it looks clean is there's no dark stuff left in the groove. It's really cleaned up. So I think we're good there. Basically, I'm just in case and for insurance purposes to, to make sure that that's the the one place where the problem is. I'm going to do the same thing up here. And again, I'm not going to go deeper. I'm just basically making sure that there's a continuous um, angle here and that this thing's not hanging up on the sides too. Gonna call that good enough. Let's see if we can put her back together and get her to play or if we have to do more. Hear the difference now? Nice and clean. All right, I'm going to check the tuning and then I'm going to play it for you. Wow. The record for the longest guitar I've ever kept in the shop, and it was all due to the finish. And truly, we had to do a lot of work to this. If you remember, we took it all apart, put in quite a few new braces, a new bridge pad, straightened up a lot of things. Wow, I like it. Let's, uh, before we play it, let's uh, just check a few of the vitals here. Let's just you know, just to make sure that it's set up really well. It feels like it's set up pretty darn good, I gotta tell you, just from the feel, but uh, I haven't checked it yet, so let's, let's get down and inspect it. So I got my little thin pick here. Let's look down here first, and I gotta get my close-up specs back on. Very tight already, that one's tight. So no problem there. Yeah, those are tight. All of them are real tight. They're just fine. And actually, they're a little tighter than I typically set them, but as long as it ain't buzzing, I'm good with that. And this here is really good too. It's 80 thousandths, uh, maybe 85 thousandths, so that's fine. And this is 65 thousandths on this side, so I'm good with that. Yeah, the setup is perfectly fine on this. So thank you, thank you, thank you for not making me have to fight for that. Well, I just looked up the 1930s popular songs and according to one thing I saw there, Hank Williams had the top three songs of the 1930s. I Saw the Light was number three. Uh, I've Got the Love Sick Blues was number two. And number one was I'm so lonesome I could cry. I got a feeling called the blues, Lordy, since my baby said goodbye. I don't know what I'm gonna do. All I do is sit inside. Oh Lord, the last long day she said goodbye. Lord, I love to hear her when she called me sweet daddy. Such a beautiful dream. I hate to think it's all over. Lost 
cause my heart it sings. I've grown so used to you and now I'm nobody sugar daddy now I'm lonesome I got the love I'm not so sure about my last note, but otherwise it wasn't too bad. <laughs> I didn't know where I was going to go on that recap. Kind of surprised myself. <laughs> As I tell you, nothing is scripted here. Nothing is uh, practiced. I just do it as I do it. And there you go. That's what we got out of that. But man, I am so proud that this guitar is finished. Yeah, does it look perfect? No. I ain't gonna tell you it looks perfect, because it don't. When you get down up close, it you know, you can see the age in it. But is that a bad thing? I don't think so. I really don't. I truly think that's the way you want them to look. I, want, I think you want them to look like they're an old instrument that's been well cared for, rather than an old instrument that's been redone and it looks perfectly brand new. That don't get it. This looks really good to me. I'm really happy with it. I think Caleb did a nice job on that sunburst, and uh, I did an okay job on the rest of it. <laughs> and that's about as good as I can tell you. And I'm just tickled it's done. I am so tickled you just don't have a clue. <laughs> I think I might go out and celebrate. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. I sure think I earned it on this one. If you have not yet subscribed, be sure to do that. Thank you so much.